Hey everybody, it's Drew again, back with some more Tabletop Simulator for Dungeons & Dragons. Last episode, we talked about going through mods to collect figurines to represent your party. Taking that knowledge, we can then search through new mods to find more figurines to represent enemies, props, and structures. So, moving on towards that, the first thing we have to do is setting up our table. So this episode will be a quick one about how to set up a table. So we're going to go to single player, going to go to classic, we'll just do dominoes. So here we are. We don't want this table. What we want is to go to tables, go to custom square. Um, so now we have the option to import an image. This is where you can get some really useful stuff moving. So let's say I want to create like a tavern or something. I can then look up stuff like D&D maps and find a map that will fit my needs for a tavern. Um, this is where you can get really creative or you can fall in other people's creativity. So say I, I wanted some sort of mountain pass or like village pass map. This one's all made for me. Uh, this is a really cool example. So what I would do, I'm going to right click it, I'm going to open image a new tab. And what we want to see is it's ending in JPEG or PNG or some sort of image format. So I'm going to copy that URL. I'm going to drop it in there and import. So a few seconds and there we go. There's the image. Um, it's already got grid lines for us and we could just plop our party on top of that. So we got these dominoes from when we loaded in. Just delete those. So here we go. Got a nice village intersection that we can make some conflict out of. I can go to my saved objects. Here we have the protectors that I made in the last episode. And I'm just going to drop my figurines. You roughly want each figurine to like fill up one square. Uh, so they're at a, a pretty decent size right now. And there you go. Um, this also works if you don't have grid lines on the image itself. So if I wanted to fix this up uh, to a new custom square um, and I want an image that doesn't come with grid lines, say this one, uh, this is more of like a large scale map. So this is a good segue into my next segment of this episode. So I want to open image a new tab, copy that URL, drop it in there and end import. So there's that. So we don't have grid lines don't really need it for a large scale map but if we wanted to get grid lines there's an option for that so we go to options grid we could choose the type if you use hex or if you use boxes and then we could just hit show lines and there you go um, and now say you wanted to resize these grid lines to kind of map the scale of the image you're using you can just use these to change the size of those boxes um, and so for a map like this size, if I actually wanted to implement grids on it, I'm going to shrink down those boxes big time. Uh, probably probably like that scale, like really small. So then what, what I can do is each character is supposed to take up one grid spot. So I can just hover over them and shrink them using the minus key. And there we go. Got a nice figurine on our nice laid out map. So now what I want to talk about is using these for reference maps. So say this is a town of Darnagal, pretty cool. Um, oh, it even has a scale for us, so 50 feet. So this, these grid lines are actually way too, way too large. Um, 50 feet, so each, each square is five feet. So we'd have to get like 10 squares in there, uh, but that's not really gonna happen. Um, so there's that. Uh, now moving on, we want to use these as a large scale map for say the party is entering this town and there's a lot of stuff that we need to move around to, but we don't need to represent the hundreds and hundreds of people here. This is just kind of for reference. And then say we have a conflict at the markets, um, or like a major event happening there. We could go and build that in a separate map, just representing this area, say, um, and so what we're going to do is we want some sort of marker to represent the party. First, what I'm going to do is take away these grid lines because we don't need them. So I already kind of have a marker that I got. Um, and I'm going to use them as light spheres. 
So here I have a bag of light spheres. Here's a yellow light sphere. So this is cool because I could just move this around and it's super bright. Um, I might have one. Yeah, I think. If the, yeah, this one's on a platform, so that's a little bit nicer for my purposes. Um, so you can right click the ball, uh, set to how, how bright and powerful you want it to be. And this is a nice way to draw attention to where the party is. So we're gonna say we're gonna come in from this gate. You could say, all right, party, you are all at this bright ball here. And then they'll decide where they wanna move from there. Say, we wanna move to the center. And you just take the ball and party's there now. Um, so that's another thing you could do for hunting, hunting through the mods and getting some cool, useful stuff out of that. Uh, we could also throw down props and stuff uh, as landmarks. So say that you're supposed to encounter a dog here. Um, and that dog, maybe he has a note from somebody who wants to speak with them. You could kind of have him as a landmark here. And uh, whenever the party moves around, eventually they'll encounter the dog and then you'll you'll go through that interaction so this is how you make like kind of large-scale maps for reference um, and last but not least to set up our table I have some couple kind of bits of flair I like to throw in uh, one cool kind of element is this big candle you plop it in it casts light and shadow it's just kind of like a cool touch to have on this table um, so I like to have that. You could even shrink this down some. Woo! Shrink it down some. And there you could have that to represent your party instead, which is kind of cool. Um, and last, a cool kind of a bit of uh, immersion is the backgrounds. So you can see in the background here, I have this grayed out kind of reddish color. Uh, they have some pre built for you. So say we're in a making like a field map, you can make the background match what the map is going to be. So like this is a, a city in the middle of big plains. So this rather matches it other than those kind of modern homes over there. Um, so that's cool. Uh, I have one that I am very partial to. Um, I have it saved, but I also, I also will include a URL for this image in the description below if you'd like to use it. Um, all right, so here it is, tavernbackground.jpg. I have it saved, uh, and then it asks, do you want to upload this to the cloud or just keep it local? I upload it to the cloud in case I'm going to be uh, running my games from my laptop and not on my gaming computer. Uh, if it was local, that file would only be synced to this computer and not go on to my Steam cloud. So I'm going to point it to that. I'm going to import it. And there we go. I got this cool tavern background that's a panorama shot from Witcher. So it's a cool kind of tavern. Um, and the key here is you need to get a panorama image. The panorama is what lets us look around here and it actually feels like we're in the center of it. So that's a major key. Um, so yeah, I'll include the URL for that below. I'd suggest you download it. Um, because who knows how long that URL will be active. Somebody might remove the image at some point and you're going to be without your cool tavern background. So that's all I have for this setting up your environment and making reference maps episode. Next time we're going to talk about making actual maps for encounters and other such events. Thanks for watching.